From afar, big air kite surfing looks like a sport dominated by men. But if you press the eye a little closer to the water, you'll see something bubbling and boiling beneath the surface, about to blast free. That something is women's big air, and these ladies will stop at nothing to carve out a space in this universe for themselves and all the women who follow. Well, I mean, most of the girls I know are scared of strong wind. I started kite surfing um, in the UK when I was 10 years old, but then I had some bad accidents. So I stopped kiting for five years. When I was 15, I tried it again and realized, wow, this sport is amazing. My dad had a really bad kiting accident. He like broke his hip, his arm and everything. And they just didn't want me to start until like they knew it was safe. But when I turned eight, they were like, okay, sure, you can start. and. What I got really mad about was they let my brother start when he was six. This sport really is quite ridiculous. These kites are basically pieces of fabric stitched together into a wing. Daring kiters pump them up at the beach and tether themselves to the fabric with thin, strong strings, harnessing only the power of the wind and the water. They jump as high as 10-story buildings. Their velocities match a cheetah's sprint as they traverse distances as far as three football fields. With forces like these at play, you can imagine the consequences of the slightest misstep. Who are some women that have really impressed you? Zara. Only Zara. <laughs> <laughs> of course Zara, of course Zara, she's, she's really pushed it from kiting only for three to four years now. Well, he was training Big Air a lot and I, I was like, yeah, I want to learn a kite loop. I was just practicing like board offs, like rotations with one footers, rotations with board offs and then it took me so long to learn kite loops. Like I just, I jumped and I, I cranked the bar. And after that, I just like kind of blacked out. Like he was said to me like, what are you doing? I'm like, I don't know. He's like, do you sheet out the bar? I'm like, I don't know. He's like, do you look at the kite? I like, I cranked the bar and then I kept on pulling, you know, so that the kite never came up. And I'm like, oh, crashing in a bikini and all the water. Like, oh, so bad. She's a wrecking ball. Especially at the start, I remember teaching her the first loops and I was just like, at some point she's gonna break. She was trying on a 10 meter in like 17 knots or something. It was really, and she just took like 20 poundings in a row. And she's like, I don't know, I'm doing something wrong. It's like, well, <laughs> we'll get there, you know? I think women's kiting is especially in its infancy and we're seeing a change rapidly. The women coming in from freestyle who all of a sudden are interested in big air, it's, the level's gonna go from here to whoop. It's gonna step up a lot just in the coming months, there's no doubt about that. Of these new breed riders, you, you can't go past Pippa, she's been the most consistent rider when it comes to it. I started because of my dad. My dad is a guider since 2000 and I live near the water. Yeah, basically from the moment that you start body dragging and, and feel the power of the kite, I immediately loved it. It was super strong in Holland. We had these storms and I, I come out, I saw people riding like a five and stuff and I came there and pumped up my seven. My dad was there too. And people come up, my dad, and I was like, do you think this is responsible? And he said, yeah, wait and, 
and watch. So he dragged me, put on my board, and as soon as you have your board on, you can hold the guide way easier because you just have the technique. Yeah, the people there, yeah, of course, they were surprised of seeing like a, a tiny girl because I'm also not that big <laughs> riding in these strong conditions. But that, that also feels really good that you can prove anyone wrong. Natalie Lambrecht, she's been going crazy. I was in Egypt and it was about 18 knots and we we're just trying some some normal stuff. I saw some board offs, it's like, why don't you loop the kite? And she's like, I don't know, never done it. It's like, okay, let's, let's try. You just do this and this. And I try to help her out a bit. And within a day, she landed a kite loop, a back row kite loop and a boogie loop. I've been kiting since I was 12 years old. I started like in Guna uh, and yeah, it was the, my babysitter who wanted me to spend more time on the beach so she could be with her kite instructor that she was together with at the time. Uh, so then I was like, okay, uh, I want to learn too. And then she got to spend more time at the beach as well. So it was like a win-win situation. I don't know, it's so much adrenaline. You can just do a straight kite loop a hundred times and have as much fun no matter what. Like compared to freestyle, if I do 100 rally to blinds they're not fun anymore but like going super high and just sending a straight loop can I can do it just a million times and get the same adrenaline and the same butterflies and you see Mika she comes from the the freestyle background and she just copies any bigger trick and lands them right away she has been talking like ah bigger is easy I'm like Mika shut up like you know like and then you know she literally grabs a twin tip board first place next one first place I'm like Girls are actually practicing all year long and she just grabs a twin tip with straps and boom, then she kills all of them. Actually no, this year was the first year we got equal prize money in Colombia. Before that it was like the guys would get 3,500 for first or 4,000 and I would get like 1,800 or something, you know, it was really bad. Like, no, like I have the same risk injury as you. I'm doing doubles, I'm doing this, I'm just kiting in the same wind, I'm doing that. Like, why am I not getting paid the same? We have to pay for a flight, we have to come here, we have to eat, we have to do this. And the guys are like, yeah, but we have so much more competition. And I'm like, well, I mean, we're, we're paying the same amount of money to come here and we're leaving with a lot less. How many women have competed in the Red Bull King of the Year? Uh, one. I believe Angelie's the only one that's competed in the uh, in King of the Air. That's a whole nother thing. She's just next next level stuff, and Angelie's just some things. Just like wow, I want to do this, and she just goes for it. The Queen of Big Air. Yeah, it's uh, Angie. She's yeah always been into riding super gnarly conditions, and uh, she was always up there with the boys, rocking as hard as possible. I think one of the only girls actually that has a really powerful riding style. Like, no other girls is going as fast on the kicker as she's, for example, approaching. For most of the women, is a very big inspiration because she's, well, like, the first woman that went, like, fucking huge, does kite loops with rotations. I think she was the first woman that landed, like, a laid-back, boogie kite loop board off. There is no other girl that is doing as extreme loops as she is. Literally no one. Even Mika with all her rotations, she's so far away from the extremity that Anjali is doing. And Anjali is just always like, ho, ho, ho. You know, she's always so funny. <laughs> so I'm Anjali Bouillot. I just turned today 35. Yuppie. I saw a video, that uh, old video from King of the Year, from Captain. I said, what, what, what is that? Uh, and I didn't understand also why there was no woman. And I said, okay, let's go check by my own eyes and uh, come here and Captain. And that's I think that's why I came uh, in Big Air. Yeah, it was just that there were not really a lot of girls doing Big Air. It was mostly Angie pushing it. And uh, yeah, now you see more girls tagging on, on that train as well. And I think it's in her favor as well. So she has some, some girls to feed off with. I'm, I'm so happy. I'm so happy uh, to see uh, that there are more girls. I'm feeling uh, not alone. It's helped me a lot to push myself also again. For me, she is like the history. She was, you know, the one who Got in Nakoda. Um, she was been in Coda twice. She's the only female to ever have been in Coda. She definitely, um, you know, was sending it. Deserved to be there. How was your experience at King of the Air? Uh, the first one, uh, like really stressful. I was thinking too much. Uh, 
but uh, after I was better uh, mentally and I try to do what I can. It doesn't really make sense to for women to be in CODA because the level is so high. So it would make more sense, in my opinion, to create like a queen of the air, for example. Let's, as a collective, go to King of the Air and say, we want a big air event in Cape Town for us. And I think that's, that's got to be the end goal for the, these ladies. They've, they've got to want to put enough pressure on Red Bull. I mean, this is going to be King of the Air 10. It's a perfect opportunity to have a, a ladies' fleet. Not only are competitions a platform for riders to showcase their talents, but also a driving force in the evolution of big air kite surfing. And now a lot of girls are like starting to push. I think it's also because of the Big Air Kite League, like the competitions are here, so they have like a reason to push. Competition is what pushes you to actually push yourself. Like, um, when I'm training for a competition, I'm training way harder than I ever would. I enjoy being pushed out of my comfort zone. I enjoy, um, you know, the process of being scared and acknowledging that I'm scared and overcoming that fear and, you know, pushing myself to then, like, try a new trick or land that new trick. Um, because, you know, when you're going for something new, it is incredibly scary. And that feeling for me and that stoke when I land a new trick is, it actually comes from me overcoming that fear. And that's what I love. And I'm sure other ladies also, you know, have that same feeling of acknowledging the fear and then, you know, having that passion to overcome it. Do you feel like there's a pressure to have more body focused content? No. I think everyone should do what they feel is right for them and if it's expressing yourself with your body then fine because we are living a sport with bikinis. If it's part if I'm setting up my kite in a bikini it's fine, you know, but it's like often I like to ride in, in board shorts or in wetsuits because I don't like the wedgies. <laughs> I've had like um, for example talks with some companies and they even for example said to me it's you know, if you uh, use your body as your unique selling uh, point, basically, it is good for your followers and um, you will reach more people. And I'm like, yeah, I'm not like that. And I think that's really what you can decide yourself. If you like it, then do it, but I'm, I don't support it. Do you think it's different for women? Oh, for sure, for sure, oh. for sure. I was thinking of once doing a, um putting a bikini on and doing a bikini shoot and seeing how many, how many likes I got for like a little model thing up the beach, you know? Definitely is, but I can see why, you know, everyone loves opening Instagram and seeing a gorgeous woman, you know? When asked if they had any advice for aspiring female big air kiters, this is what these riders had to say. The fear is there, obviously, the risks are there, but if you don't do it, you will never know what would have happened. But even though you are scared, just know that all of us are scared. I think you just have to go for it. Like nothing is impossible and... Why are you questioning, like, why am I doing this? But there, you know, there is that moment where you just have to say, fuck it, I'm gonna go for it. I remember last year when I was making this like trick list with stuff I wanted to land, I wrote down a laid back and a boogie and I was like, oh my God, I'm, I'm not even sure if I'm ever able to do that. And once I went for it, I was like, ah, okay, it's not impossible. To all the girls out there uh, kiting hard, believe in yourself and uh, visualize and just put your mind to it and you will become it. So really enjoy your sessions and stay safe out there. See you in the air. And basically what happened is they started marketing that I wasn't the world champion. This is where the magic happens. So for the people that think we're living our best lives, we're struggling. <laughs> Watch the next episode over here. And big thank you to Makani Beach Club and Cork Kiteboarding for sponsoring Fight for Flight.